MSR Denali snowshoes are the bomb in the backcountry. These things are durable, they can take a beating, you can walk across rock in them. They have metal rails, they have metal crampons. Um, they're fairly lightweight, they'll just take a beating in the backcountry, they're awesome. However, they have one fatal flaw. They came with these crappy rubber straps originally. And you're lucky if you get two years out of this set of straps. And they'll break on you out in the backcountry. And then, you, of course, you can't fix them. So I'm going to show you today how to fix it with nylon webbing and some clips so that they become easy to get in and out of and adjustable and durable. And they're not going to be affected by freeze-thaw cycles and they will last and it's just an incredible upgrade for these things. Here's what you're going to need to, to do this job. You're going to need a roll of three quarter inch nylon webbing, preferably something medium or heavy kind of heavy duty. Then you're going to need some buckles, three quarter inch buckles that are the right width. You're going to need a lighter and you're going to need something to cut with. I like I like uh, kitchen shears, or you can use a razor knife. And that's pretty much it. First thing we're gonna do is start with a piece of webbing about, this one is 29, but I'd, I'd probably go with about 30 inches to start with. And <clears throat> then you're gonna, after you've cut it, you're gonna take your lighter and cauterize the end of it so that it doesn't fray on the end. Then, we're going to start in the center on the buckle side. Run this through here. You want enough of a tail so that you can adjust it. And the way that it has worked for me is to go through the bottom one first, then come back through this side, back to the middle, oh, sorry, up to the top. <clears throat> then over to the other buckle. And now both of your adjusters are gonna end up on the same side over here. So when you put your boot in, then you're able to strap it down a little bit more on the top and a little bit more on the bottom part. You can, you can figure out your own configuration, but this ends up looking like a laced up shoe, um, which I think is a very efficient way of doing it. I'm just going to demonstrate the uh, cutting and and using the uh, flame to show you how that works. Because when you cut, you can see just how much fraying there is here. And then you take the lighter. It's a little windy out today. And now we have no more fraying. So next we're going to take a piece about eight inches long. And we're going to come in through this buckle. Long enough to double back. So we're going to come through, maybe leave about two inches on there. Then we're going to come and double back through here so it cannot come loose. It will basically, if you pull on it, it tightens itself. Let's see if we can get that through there. Yep, here we go. Now, that is on there. Now you can take the buckle, put it through here, and this is not the adjustable side. That's why it's so short. Uh, this one is just going to stay you can loop this one through again, uh, but it's probably fine to leave it like that. So now we've got the one side of the buckle that's not going to move. The other side is going to be longer. This is going to attach to that, and it will have a pull strap to adjust it. For the other side of the back of the snowshoe, it just essentially has a D-ring, so there's no way to loop it around and tighten it back against itself for a very secure uh, not. So what we're going to do is take the webbing 
and make an overhand on a bite knot, which essentially is the same as a um, <clears throat> water knot. So this is going to go, I want to have this on the out, have the strapping on the outside. So coming through like this and now what's going to happen is see when you pull on this, it actually tightens the knot and that's the kind of thing you want. You, you want it to, as it gets tighter, it tightens the knot. So then that's going to end up being here. You're going to come around the end of the snowshoe. This is for length and back to here and then add an inch or two. And that should give you plenty of length to come around the back of your boot, go through the clip and then have a tail of, you know, four to six inches long that you can grab and pull to tighten down your boot in the, <clears throat> in the snowshoe. So now to make this work like a water knot, we're going to loosen it up just a little bit, pull the tail through, put that through the loop, come back and just follow it back through the knot. Okay, and now that is on there and on there tightly. So we come around, come to here, we add a couple of inches and this is about where I want to cut and I'll measure it in a minute just to show you what that measurement is. Okay, nicely done there. I do both ends. You don't want your webbing to start coming apart in while it's being stored. Get a bit of breeze here, making it harder on me. Well, that'll do for the moment. Okay, now we're going to take the other part of our clip, come through closer to the clip first, and up over the, uh, the high side, goes outward, back through here, and we get a nice long tail on it, and clip here. Now that looks pretty darn long to me, um, probably too long, but you can always cut. So that's probably about where it's gonna be, maybe a little less, maybe there around the back of the boot. And that's a pretty long tail, so we'll, we'll cut it as needed. Now I'm gonna take it all apart and measure how long I think it should be. I think it's about that much too long, so I'm just gonna put a little fold in it at that point and dismantle it and from there to there looks like again about 29 inches, maybe maybe you start with 30. That seems like a safe bet. So last thing, we're going to put the boot in and adjust it a little bit until we've got something that fits nicely. You want your toe of your boot to stick out a little bit, but not far enough to, to hit that. You want a good inch or inch and a half, two inches of clearance, eh, something like that. Okay, now... This one is going to need to be tightened down some. And maybe here a little bit. 
Okay, tightening those straps down, coming around here on the heel of the boot. Uh, I've got the knot in place there. Strap on the inside. It doesn't it doesn't really matter if it's inside or outside, but inside would probably keep it from catching on anything. So now we can pull it tight and nicely secured into the boot and it's not going to break in a freeze thaw cycle. Last thing I'm going to do is just trim off the excess that I don't need here. I think you want to be able to grab it full a full hand length on here. You could even I guess you could even make a loop out of it, but it seems like a waste. I'm just going to make it so I divide this in half. That'll be that'll be a good length for a tail. Okay, now it is not going to fray, and that is a secure, tight boot in that snowshoe, and the snowshoe is going to last a long time now. more thought before I close this out is you really want to adjust these things at home before you get to the trail because there's nothing like getting out in the snow and finding out your sh snowshoes aren't adjusted properly and you have to sit there with bare hands in the snow trying to tighten these tighten these straps and then your hands get freezing and then they stop working right um, it's best to adjust them first put your boot in it and do what I've done here then put your foot in you know in the boot and put them on and walk around in them a little bit and see if they're see if they're twisting any or whatever and get it to uh, get it to be really tight and the way you want it to be in the boots you're going to use and then you're going to be a happy hiker out there on the snow all right the snowshoe up see if that helps with all this post holing Hope you found this helpful. Let me know in the comments if you have any variations that have worked for you. And uh, thanks for watching.